Like most applications, we need to authenticate with our backend. So currently in Bug Porter, we have authentication on the front end and we have authentication on the back end, but currently we're not sending the Firebase access token from our .NET MAUI application to our backend Azure function. So all requests that hit our backend end up being unauthenticated. So that being said, we need to take some steps to manage authentication state in our .NET MAUI front end application and then pass the access token of the currently logged in user to our backend Azure function. So we have a sprint set up. Let's go ahead and start this sprint. So step one, before we can even worry about passing the access token to our backend, we need to manage authentication state and keep track of the currently logged in user. So essentially we need to store the access token of the currently logged in user somewhere in our application where we can set it after we log in and then get the access token, get the current user, when we make requests to our backend. So this kind of communication between where we sign in and where we make requests, we're going to have to connect that all together and manage this state in a centralized location. And this is where we get to stores. Now we haven't done any stores in bug porter. So I'm pretty excited about this. So stores are essentially singletons that manage application state in a centralized single source of truth. And we'll be able to set that state from anywhere in our application and get that state wherever we need it. So this store, what we're going to be storing is the current user. So this current user is essentially an entity. So we're going to create an entities folder and the entity we're dealing with in our application is a user. So we're going to make this folder users. And then inside here, we're going to have our store and the store is going to contain or represent the current user. So we're going to call this the current user store. And all we're going to have on the store is a property for a user. And this user is going to be the firebase.auth user. And we're just going to call it current user. So now we need to set this current user after we log in. So vertical slice architecture we got going on over here. Let's find where we sign in. Of course, it's going to be in the sign in feature. Very easy to find. Thank you, vertical slice architecture. So we sign in with our firebase auth client. And we get back this user credential. Let's get that into a variable, the user credential. And on this user credential, we have the user that we just signed in with. So we just need to set this user on our current user store. So we're going to need our current user store in this command. So the current user store, let's define that and get it through the constructor and now we can simply take the current user store and set the current user to our new logged in user so now we're essentially managing our authentication state in this centralized current user store which we'll be able to access later so now let's register this in dependency injection so let's head over to our maui program and we're going to take our builder services and we want to add this store as a singleton because we only want one instance. This is our single source of truth. So it's going to be a singleton. Let's register the current user store. And now I believe where we instantiate our sign in command, we're going to have to pass that current user store. So the sign in form view model is going to need the current user store passed to it so that we can forward it to our sign in command. So now when I sign in, here we go. We hit our breakpoint. We signed in successfully. We got our user credential. There's our user and we're going to set it on the current user store, which we did successfully. So let's commit these changes for BGP 33. That's the story we were working on. And we're now managing the authentication state commit and close out this issue. So now we just need to take that authentication state, grab the access token of the current user and pass that to our back end. So of course in bug porter, we're using refit to make a request to our backend. So we're making a post request to the bugs endpoint with this refit interface. So when we execute the command on this refit interface, we also want to pass along the access token of the current user in some kind of authentication header. Now there's a few ways to pass the access token in refit, but I found the best way to do it is with a custom HTTP message handler. So this is essentially a middleware that executes before we make our request to our API. So if we follow along to configure HTTP client where we register our refit interface, we can also add an HTTP message handler of any type that we want. 
So we're going to define a custom HTTP message handler that's going to append the current user's access token to our request and allow us to automatically authenticate our request. So this HTTP message handler, let's actually put this next to our current user store because it's going to reference this store specifically, and it is highly related to our user entity. So we're going to add a new item here. Let's call this the current user auth HTTP message handler. And this is going to be a delegating handler. So let's inherit from that part of system.net.http. And now we can override the send async method. And we can do anything we want up here. And it'll execute before we send our HTTP request message and send the request to our back end. So essentially what we want to do is get some kind of access token. And then if we have an access token, so it's not null, then we want to take our request headers and we want to set the authorization header to be a new here we go authentication header value let's just import that where our scheme is bare that's the scheme that our backend accepts and we want the value to be our access token so if we're logged in and we can get an access token we'll send it if not then we just won't send an access token and we'll get some kind of authentication error or maybe we're hitting an endpoint that doesn't need authentication anyways so now we just need to get this access token and that's going to come from our current user store. So let's get the current user store and we're going to inject that through the constructor. So this is going to get registered in dependency injection in a bit. And now let's just create a separate method for getting the access token. So let's generate a method for that and let's grab the current user off of our current user store. And now this current user could be null if we're not logged in. So let's check that. If the current user is null, then we're just going to not return an access token and just return null. But if we do have a user, then we're going to take that user and we're going to call get ID token async, which will give us our Firebase ID token for the logged in user. And if the Firebase access token is expired, it'll refresh it automatically for us. And this is async. So we're going to have to return a task for a string and then we'll be able to return the access token and then also we are potentially making a refresh request to get a new access token against some kind of endpoint so that could fail so let's wrap this all in a try catch just in case and if we get an exception we'll just return null and essentially make an unauthenticated request so now we made this method async so now let's await this method to get back our access token so this override is gonna have to be async as well so now let's register this in dependency injection. So let's add this HTTP message handler to our refit HTTP client. And then we also need to register this HTTP message handler in dependency injection in order to use it here. So let's take our builder services and we should be able to just add this as a singleton. And there we go. So now putting this all together, we sign in, which sets the current user on our current user store to the user we just logged in with and then we can go ahead and report a bug which is going to execute our report bug api command which is our refit interface but now this has our current user auth http message handler attached to the refit http client here so we're going to get into this and we're going to try to append the access token to the request so we get our current user from the current user store since we are logged in. So it's not null and we are able to get an ID token async. So we can see that access token was retrieved for us. There we go. And now we append it to the request and we execute the request. And looking at the logs on our Azure function API, we can see that we were successfully authenticated so our API grabbed the access token off of that request header and successfully authenticated us. Now we did get an error here because my GitHub access token expired, so we weren't able to actually create the GitHub issue. But nonetheless, we did prove that authentication is now working across our stack. So everything looked good. Let's commit these changes, passing the access token to the back end. There we go. And with that, we can close out the last issue. So let's complete the sprint. We have successfully authenticated with our backend. So in summary, we created our current user store, which stores the current user state for our application. It's a single source of truth. We can set it whenever we sign in and we can get it whenever we need the current user. 
which in our case, we did need the current user in another part of our application, which was in our custom HTTP message handler in order to append the access token of the current user so that our backend could authenticate the request. So overall, hopefully you can apply these concepts to your own .NET MAUI front-end application so that you can manage authentication state for the currently logged in user and ultimately pass an access token on request in order to authenticate with your API.